I am confused, number 11. I am confused about all the teaching referring to binding and loosing. What does the Bible teach? Please explain Matthew 18, 18. This is one of the saddest chapters of the church. About 10 years ago, maybe 12, maybe 15, the church entered into a stupid phase. Somebody must have given them a stupid pill. And everybody was taking it because what should have been wonderful prayer meetings turned into nothing except binding the devil meetings. Instead of us talking to God, not us, but many, instead of talking to God, all we did was talk to the devil. You know, when God and the devil are separate like this, and you're talking to one, your back's to the other. And, and all we got was, you know, I bind you devil, I bind you devil, I bind you devil. We got to the point where if there was a creak in the door, people were saying, I bind the creak. It is absolutely foolishness. In fact, the devil has been so-called bind so many times. You know, I don't know how he's loose to do anything. And yet the Bible does talk about a little bit about binding and loosing, a little bit, important bits, and I'm going to refer to them in a moment or two. But I mean, the, the devil ought to be just in chains in a corner somewhere. And another thing, why didn't Paul do this? Instead of going into a city, you know, and getting kicked up and down Main Street or thrown in jail or beaten up, why did he not just sit on a rock outside and say, I bind the devil, I bind the spirit of homosexuality, I bind, I bind, like you hear? This is foolishness. Well, does it not say in Matthew 18, 18, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yeah, it does. Whatsoever, not whosoever. It's not talking about a devil or a demon or the devil who's a person. It's talking about a whatsoever. You know, in real estate, they say the, the three main things, location, location, location. In theology, the three main things, context, context, context. Because contact or a text without context is a pretext to error. You've got to get to know the context. This is not talking anything about demons. What's it talking about? It's talking about some brother in a church who feels he's been wronged by another brother. And Jesus is giving the rules here as to how such a problem should be dealt with. First of all, you go to that brother privately, try to work it out. If he will not respond, take two or three witnesses. If he will not respond, take it to the church. And finally, if it's obvious that he's wrong, then the Bible says he is wrong, he is bound up, and we can pronounce over him what the Bible says. He is bound to his error and bound to his sin. Or, of course, if he confesses and gets it right, then we have the authority of the Scripture to say, you are loosed from this situation and restored to fellowship. In other words, binding and loosing has to do with church discipline. Zero to do with casting out demons. I, I almost, uh, I'm not going, well, I think I'll do it quickly because I'm running out of time. Let me give you the context. Matthew 18, not just 18, but what about 15 where the context starts? Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established. But if he neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man or a publican. Verily I say unto you, Jesus then says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth. In other words, you can say to him, it's already bound in heaven. Jesus has already declared this is the way of it. If he will not deal with you personally, nor two or three witnesses, nor before the church, he's bound. You can say that. Or if he repents, he's loosed. That's the context. It's nothing to do with anything else. Oh, I just so want to go into something more. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. Do I have time for this? Let me just see. I may not have. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. This, where is it? This tremendous scripture says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't go around saying, I bind you, devil. Devil will laugh at you. What do you say? Our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, what are those weapons? Casting down imaginations. And listen to it. 
and every high thing that exalteth it, exalted itself against the knowledge of God. In other words, bringing your thoughts and everything into agreement with God's Word. This is the way to cast down the strongholds of the devil. Bringing every thought into captivity of Christ. Not going around having a conversation with the devil. The devil enjoys you being taken up by him, even if you're talking to bind him. For whatever you talk about is going to get you, even if you're talking against it. I know that's right.